He was a cowboy And the last one it seemed Somebody once said, well, you do a lot of things. And I said, no, I only do one thing. I just change my tools. And I really believe that because I'm, I'm exactly the same person if I'm shooting photographs or if I'm playing the guitar or if I'm writing. And there are the same inner feelings. I'm trying to say the same thing, whatever that thing is. A child of the rain. Robert James Waller has touched the hearts of readers across the country with his best-selling novel, The Bridges of Madison County. Now, Robert further explores the book's characters and themes and makes his recording debut on the album The Ballads of Madison County, released by Atlantic Records. She was a dancer with dreams of her own and he was a dreamer. Author, photographer, economics professor, folk musician. Robert James Waller has been called by some a true Renaissance man. His novel, The Story of a Brief Love Affair between wandering photographer Robert Kincaid and lonely Iowa farm wife Francesca Johnson, has been a publishing phenomenon, landing the number one spot on the New York Times bestseller list for nearly half a year and selling three million hardback copies. With the ballads of Madison County, Robert has crafted a musical companion to the novel featuring his own songs based on his story as well as all the classic songs mentioned in the book. I've been playing and singing about 30 years. Started in again last fall. And I've been doing a lot of readings and lectures based on the book. And I thought, well, I'm, I could build a guitar in a little, so I could sing a bit, you know, to illustrate some of the things. We need a lot more slow dancing to radio songs. I had written a song called uh, The Madison County Waltz and liked it. It went with the book. It's, uh, it, it sort of echoes the book is a good way to put it, I think. And I sent it to, uh, to Time Warner, my publishers. And I said, you know, it might be fun sometime to do uh, uh, an album based on the book. And when Doug Morris of Atlantic Records got word of this, he said, my gosh, let's do this. And it all came down on a Thursday afternoon. And I was in the studio 10 days after that Thursday afternoon, cutting the album. All right, so, so we'll do it live. No, that's what I think. Same tune. One more, one more last time, okay? One more last time. She grew up in The album took shape with the collaboration of a first-rate band and the creative guidance of veteran producer Arif Martin whose previous work includes records with Judy Collins, John Prine, and Willie Nelson. It's a fabulous project. The musicians loved Robert. Uh, the tracks are wonderful, bouncy, and the ballads are heartfelt. So it was really a, a great thing for me. I think it's good music. I think we played well on it. It's got a great band. Just a wonderful, wonderful band, a group of musicians from New York. that are so hot, I couldn't believe it. I wanted to play with these guys forever. So it was just lots of fun. I think the album shows it, too. Among the songs on the album is the classic Wabash Cannonball. It's a tune that Robert played during his earlier musical career for a very special audience. I was playing in a bar in Bloomington, Indiana, and this round man came in and he said, can you play the cannonball? I said, well, everybody can play the Wabash cannonball. So I played a bit of it for him, and he said, my name's Charles Keralt. I'm here doing a, a show on the last run of the Wabash cannonball. Would you do the music for it? So I did. Robert Kennedy saw that the program when it ran in the fall of 67, asked me to accompany him when he uh, campaigned in Indiana, did a whistle stop. So I'd come out in the back of the train with Robert, and he'd hold the mic, and I'd sing the Wabash Cannonball. And, and Robert would talk, and we'd pull away, and I'd sing some more. Roll camera. Roll playback. And Francesca remembers through the years going by. The album's first single is the poignant ballad, The Madison County Waltz for which Robert also filmed a music video using the authentic Madison County, Iowa locations. 
I've never acted at all in my entire life. Uh, yesterday we had to do really the acting part where I drove around in an old green truck. And that was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed that because I didn't have to say anything. Uh, it got a little harder for me when we did some more intimate scenes in a kitchen and so forth. But uh, my wife uh, played uh, Francesca Johnson, uh, the woman in the, in the book. So that made it, I suppose, a little easier. They might have been with smoke. With a screen version of the novel being developed by Steven Spielberg's Amblin Entertainment, the astonishing success of this literary milestone continues to grow. The Ballads of Madison County is a loving tribute to this moving book and a touching musical work in its own right. The album stands on its own. You don't have to read the book to like the album, I hope. We, we made sure of that. We tried to do a good piece of music as well as reflect the book. He was a cowboy, and the last one it seems, a rider of sundowns, an old faded dream. The last of the cowboys, a child of the rain. A rider of first light And old westbound trains And Francesca remembers Through the years gone by Four days with the cowboy And the late summer sky when Kincaid was rolling Through the green summer land Into Madison County Where the old bridges stand She was a dancer With dreams of her own a dreamer who danced all alone They might have been wood smoke They might have been wind Or they might have been magic They won't come again Slow dancing Till radio sound More brandy and candles As the nights move along We need a lot more old cowboys Out there on their own And a woman to remember them when they're scattered and blown. She was a dancer with dreams of her own, and he was a dreamer who danced all alone. They might have been with smoke They might have been wind Or they might have been magic That won't come again So you might hear this song 
across the green rolling land out in Madison County where the old bridges stand. It's a little story about uh, a world-class photographer, a roving, lonely kind of guy who drifts into Madison County to photograph the covered bridges of Madison County and meets a farmer's wife named Francesca Johnson. At one level, the book is a love story. At another level, it's about many other things, about alienated men and how they might feel obsolete in a world of high technology and so forth. started in again last fall and I've been doing a lot of readings and lectures based on the book and I thought well I'm, I could build the guitar in a little so I could sing a bit you know to illustrate some of the things so I got it back got it back out again I've been playing pretty regularly I had written a song called uh, the Madison County Waltz and liked it it went with the book it's uh, it it sort of echoes the book is a good way to put it, I think. And I sent it to, uh, to Time Warner, my publishers. And I said, you know, it might be fun sometime to do uh, uh, an album based on the book. When Doug Morris of Atlantic Records got word of this, he said, my gosh, let's do this. And it all came down on a Thursday afternoon. Uh, I, made, I was in the studio 10 days after that Thursday afternoon, cutting the, the album. The album stands on its own. You don't have to read the book to like the album, I hope. We, we made sure of that. We tried to do a good piece of music as well as reflect the book. I've never acted at all in my, my entire life. Uh, yesterday we had to do really the acting part where I drove around in an old green truck. Now, that was fun. <laughs> I enjoyed that because I didn't have to say anything. Uh, it got a little harder for me when we did some more intimate scenes in a kitchen and so forth. But uh, my wife uh, played uh, Francesca Johnson, the, the woman in the, in the book, so that made it, I suppose, a little easier. Somebody once said, well, you do a lot of things. And I said, no, I only do one thing. I just change my tools. And I really believe that because I'm, I'm exactly the same person if I'm shooting photographs or if I'm playing the guitar or if I'm writing it. And there are the same inner feelings. I'm trying to say the same thing, whatever that thing is. It was a fabulous project. We had three great days. The musicians loved Robert. Uh, the tracks are wonderful, bouncy, and the ballads are heartfelt. So it was really a, a great thing for me. He was excited a little bit because uh, we had a, a very, uh, you know, uh, a band with, full of uh, well-known uh, musicians like Eric Weisberg and, and many others. And he was a little, he wasn't intimidated, but he was apprehensive in the beginning. Two takes, he became a, a, a recording artist. Yes, I'll take it from the verse, I'll, I'll do this, you know. And uh, he really adapted very well, and uh, he's a very nice guy, and, uh, you know, we just became friends, actually. with his best-selling novel, The Bridges of Madison County. Now, Robert further explores the book's characters and themes and makes his recording debut on the album The Ballads of Madison County, released by Atlantic Records. She was a dancer with dreams of her own 
I only do one thing, I just change my tools. And I really believe that because I'm, I'm exactly the same person if I'm shooting photographs or if I'm playing the guitar or if I'm writing it. They're the same inner feelings. I'm trying to say the same thing, whatever that thing is. A child of the rain. Robert James Waller has touched the hearts of readers across the country. He was a cowboy, and the last one it seems. Somebody once said, well, you do a lot of things, and I said, no. And he was a dreamer. Author, photographer, economics professor, folk musician. Robert James Waller has been called by some a true Renaissance man. His novel, The Story of a Brief Love Affair between wandering photographer Robert Kincaid and lonely Iowa farm wife Francesca Johnson has been